Ah, yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Thank you for joining us. It's The Zone. Once again, we back at you, ready to turn your Saturday night upside down, shake it inside out, do it everything we got to do, but we ain't going to turn it loose. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you stay tuned. We got a lot going on, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let Becca tell us. Well, thank you, Michael. We are talking about a touchy subject tonight, one that has plagued this nation and many others for a long, long time. We're talking about racism. But before we do, Larry's going to tell us what videos we are watching. What's up, Becca? Hey, we got a show tonight. We got Switchfoot, DC Talk, Michael W. Smith, and our Power Clip of the Week, Urban Disciples. But I want you to hang in there because we also got a Life Zone report with our own Becca Pruitt Denny. So, Mike, here's the assist to you. All uh, right, thanks, Larry. Right now, the long wait's been over. Switchfoot with New Way to Be Human right here on The Zone. Oh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. That was Switch Foot with The Way to Be Human. I'm, I'm digging that video, man. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. But we want you to stay tuned because, you know, the topic tonight, yeah, you know, before I even get into it, you know, we got to go all the way back, 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 back to the eons of, of time to really get a solid foundation for this topic of racism. You know, I'm sitting here talking to Aisha and, and Ian and, you know, uh, Aisha, we were sitting here talking about the definition of, of racism. And tell me what you think that means. To me, racism means when you prejudge someone on their skin color and not by the content of their character. So basically looking at the outside, not the inside. That's good, that's good. Hey Ian, when you hear the word racist, man, why don't you share with me what you think that means? Well, uh, to me, a racist would be a person who judges other people by their skin color or beliefs and uh, just is judgmental about them before they really get to know them. So basically just looking at who they are, the things they wear. Yeah, looking at them from the outside, not the inside. Good. So basically what we're talking about is just an assumption rather than, than, than fact and knowledge. So what I'm going to do is kick it over to Becca and let her take it uh, a little one step further. Thanks, Michael. You know, you'd think judging someone solely based on the color of their skin would have ended a long time ago. But Staten still uses it to divide and, and cause strife among people. And it's not just a black and white issue where Caucasians are suppressing African Americans. The separation and the segregation goes on both sides now. We do it to each other. You know, and it's stereotypes too. It's with Asians and Latinos, Native Americans, it goes on and on. So Erica, tell me why you think racism hurts people so much. Well, from a Christian perspective, God has commanded us to go out and tell the world about Him. And Satan does, and his powers do everything that they can to, do, to split us apart. And we can't face these powers if from the inside we're tearing ourselves apart with racism. And so if we're, to, if we're gonna fulfill this commandment that God has given us, we have to come together and get over those barriers. That's right. The more we divide ourselves from each other, the farther we are from God and, and from His goal. I mean, think about Christ's perspective on this. You know, He was a Jew, and back in His day, Samaritans and Jews were opposed, you know. But He sat down with a Samaritan, not just a Samaritan, a Samaritan woman. He talked to her, He shared salvation with her, so He broke down all those barriers. So why can't we, thousands of years later? Larry? All right, thanks, Becca. Hey. As you can see, we talk about this thing called racism, and it's sucking like it is in this country. It's just boiling like a hot chicken. So, nevertheless, we're not trying to solve this problem in a half an hour because it's by far greater, but we're just trying to give everybody some food for thought to know that this situation doesn't be dealt with, and we just kind of give you the, the Christ perspective on this. So, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're coming back with a group called DC Talk. So, you stay locked into the zone. <laughs> like to talk to you about some things right now um, while you're out doing your internet thing checking out your favorite sites stop by surfthezone.com that's our site and you can learn all kinds of wonderful things about us upcoming shows things like that also drop us an email tell us what you think 
We want to know what you like about the show and what else you want to see. Your comments are important. Also, we want to see you here in the audience with us. We want to hang out with you. We want to get to know you. And also, we want to feed you and give you things. Free stuff is great. So call us here at the station, 513-221-4888 for some tickets. They're free tickets. Free. Can't go wrong. So uh, Becca is going to tell us what's next right now. Right. right. I get to introduce my boys. They're passionate about this topic, too. It's DC Talk. With colored people in the zone. All right, it is time for the Life Zone Report with our own Becca Pruitt Denny. And check this out now. You like this uh, topic we're talking about tonight is racism. So guess what? We want your feedback. So check up your little uh, internet thing. It's www.surfthezone.com. And we want to hear back about this racism because we know that we don't have a solution to everything, especially not in a little half an hour. So we definitely need your feedback so then we can build a case so we can deal with this. So here's the Life Zone Report. I remember my first first day of school at Miami, like the very first day of school. I was walking down the street, walking to class, you know, um, thought I was cute, you know, wearing my new outfit or whatever, and, and two guys drove past me in a car, and uh, they yelled out, nigger, go home, nigger, go nigger, home, go nigger, home. go home. Had a lot of people want to label me or put me in a box, you know, according to things that they think I should be. Like, because I'm Indian, well then, you should be good at math or, you know, you shouldn't like country music. I had the privilege of playing hockey in my life and just people calling names at me just because I was the wrong color skin and their opinion. It's been frustrating because I, I, I know that I'm identified more by the part of me that's different from white than the part that is white. Mainly when I've been with um, African American friends of mine. We run into some other students and of African American descent, and um, they they just sort of don't really acknowledge you or don't really let you into the conversation. And so I've definitely felt like the outsider, and definitely felt white. And it wasn't really the, what they yelled out, out that bothered me that much. It was more that um, I was walking down the street by myself and there were a lot of, I mean the only black person walking down the street and there were a lot of white students around me, but not one of them comforted me or said, are you okay? Or said anything like that. And these guys yelled it like, they yelled it out of a loudspeaker, you know, like that loud. And, and it just hurt me. Racism is a slap in the face, especially when the stereotypes and ignorance are shown by Christians who are called to love everyone. So, how does Jesus Christ fit into this mess? The first thing I would think of is Christ probably wasn't a white person. I think Christ would really have a tough time, especially him probably being a minority and seeing how his quote-unquote people have, have been treated. I know that, that Jesus Christ was not somebody who, who excluded one group in favor of another, um, certainly not based on on things like color, uh, on things like background. I know that Jesus um, loved everybody the same. There's so much, you can't miss it in the, in the Bible, especially the New Testament about unity, one in Christ. And, and so when that doesn't happen, I think we, um, we hinder God's work here. I think the Lord is, is definitely, has pain in his heart um, over the way that, that we sometimes treat one another. So, we can ignore the prejudice and persecution, or we can bring it before God and take action as brothers and sisters in Christ. Living in light of, of Christ's example, like we should um, pray for reconciliation, we should pray um, that the, the body of Christ would come together and cross these like, racial boundaries and differences. I had to be lenient on people and, and realize that Sometimes people just really don't know, and they're asking me. They're not always asking me questions to, you know, to offend me. Sometimes because they really just want to know what's going on, and they want to know about something that's different than them. God says we are all created in His image, so we all have traits that reflect a wonderfully diverse and complex Heavenly Father. I guess it's as simple as something I learned as a child in Sunday school.
For more information about the zone or how you can be a part of our studio audience, call us at 513-221-4888 and check us out on the web at www.surfthezone.com. Keep it here in the zone. The city of Philly, I left. I wasn't down. My family moved to a small town. I felt some tension because my skin is slightly brown. Once I was a new kid from the city, the outsider. Our cultural differences to others became a divider. I was amazed because this wasn't the way I was raised. I grew up with Italians, blacks, Puerto Ricans, Koreans. But anyway, three years later, I came down south to college. The hate between skin tones I couldn't help but acknowledge. I felt racism from both whites and blacks. Plus, I was a Yankee. It was like a catch 22. Quite frankly, I was getting cranky. When will people learn? It's 1999, riding crosses on front lawns still burn. Racial reconciliation is for what I yearn. All this hating, yo, is just a tool of Satan. The time is now for healing. Mm, we can't keep waiting. We're all equal, we're all the same. Christ's blood was for the black, the white, the Jew, the Gentile, the free, the slave. The squash, all the stereotypes in Jesus' name. Residential zones deny people loans and generation to generation create clones in the way of poor. Our cerebellum can't be bought along with you retort. See, since the Tower of Babel people fought against racial injustice. Pull up a chair, son. It's time we discuss this. Like a chat room from the cocoon to the tomb. This epidemic brings gloom. So, like a camera lens, I zoom to the source. This virus can be deadly if you let it run its course. It's my resource, so my perception is colorblind. So, whether you drive a Lexus or stand in a free lunch line, I let my light. Shine to all nationalities, colors, and creeds. I repel negativity like wax does water. Beads. Everybody bleeds. Last I checked, the color was red. Let's focus on our similarities instead. I read all kinds of books, received all kinds of looks. This thing called skin tone, mm, it's got hooks. In the flesh of all society, it's an attitude that's definitely gained notoriety. An alarm clock is what I'm trying to be. To awake you from your spiritual condition I school jummy, listen The situation's fragile like nitroglycerin I lead this expedition through the colors of a prison But so many people are locked down like prison To racism, man, I thought you knew If you let the problem root It would become permanent like a tattoo Through the father of creation, nowadays congregations are mixed up like a population. And to them, respect is due. Now let's join forces and delete those who haven't agreed or bound. In Tyloju, God has a purpose, but knowing is worthless if his love is a limit sided. 
So what controls you? Take a deep inspection of your heart's condition towards people that are different than you. Re-educate your mind. Learn to focus on what we have in common instead of our differences. Cause in God's eyes, there is no skin tone. So sorry that our time has been cut short by the constraints of uh, programming. But anyway, right now, remember, www.surfthezone.com. Go there, talk to us. We want to talk to you. And remember, guys, just because someone is a different color than you and may have different life experiences doesn't mean you can't be their friends. I mean, we're supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ, right? And I want to give a little love, a little shout for the crowd. Come on, make some noise. <laughs> always our crowd is the greatest but before we leave we don't want to forget about you so here we go we give you the video for tonight michael w smith peace <laughs>